Today's scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, and it's important to know its background. Writers most often put what's most important at the beginning of their work. John doesn't start his gospel with the birth of Jesus, the baptism or temptation of Jesus. John thought it was more important to tell us how Jesus started his public ministry at a wedding. And through this scripture, we'll hear about the glory of the Lord. Now hear the word of God. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to this wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not come. But his mother turned and said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, and each held 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, he did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water, they knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you, you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, or the first of his miracles, in Cana of Galilee. And that revealed the glory of the Lord. And his disciples believed in him. This was the word of God to the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Two thousand years ago, a great rabbi was often quoted, and he said, without wine at a wedding feast, there is no joy. So for a wedding feast, wine was essential. Unfortunately, the wine ran out at this wedding and joy was turning into embarrassment. Now we read how Jesus' mother tells him about the problem. After all, she knew Jesus was the son of God, so she expected him to do something about this problem. My sermon shows how Mary helped Jesus start his ministry, and that's why my sermon title, I've expanded it, is Mothers Know Best, So Listen to Your Mother. And I bet you a lot of the women say, Amen. And that reminds me of my mother and how she helped me start my ministry. I was living in Nebraska. My parents lived in Massachusetts. My, my mother was 85 and she hadn't driven a car in 15 years since my dad always drove. One Sunday morning I called and my mother said, your dad went into the hospital yesterday. Our neighbors can't drive me to the hospital, so I'm gonna drive the car to the hospital. But our new car won't start. It couldn't have been the battery, could not have been the battery. So I asked my mom, was the car in park? And she said, what's park? She had always driven a stick shift. I said to my mother, if you don't know what park is, you shouldn't be driving a car. There was silence. And then I heard those famous words. I'm your mother. So regardless of how old you are, regardless of what you have become, I can still tell you what to do. Listen to your mother. Tell me how to start the car. So like any good son, I told her what to do and she started the car and drove off to the hospital. 
Well, that summer, I had just te finished teaching fifth graders in vacation Bible school for the very first time. I was asked to continue teaching in the fall, and I said, probably not. I've done my time. <laughs> Soon my parents came to visit me. Friends from the church met them at the airport, and it's obvious they had been talking particularly to my mother about my teaching. Because no sooner had dinner been served than my mother asked, actually she said, when are you going to start teaching the Bible again? I said, Mom, this isn't a good time. I'm too busy at work. And once again, I heard those famous words. Listen to your mother. She knows what's best. When are you going to start serving the Lord? What are you waiting for? Well, that leads back to the scripture, because that's kind of what Mary was doing. Jesus and his disciples had been invited to that wedding, and then the wine gave out. Now, it didn't matter who failed to bring enough wine. It didn't matter if more people showed up at the wedding than, than anticipated. Running out of wine was a terrible breach of hospitality. And if they ran out of wine, from then on, at every feast in that village, people would point at that couple and say, I hope we don't run out of wine like they did at their wedding. The bride and groom would be humiliated and embarrassed in their village for the rest of their lives. But it seems Jesus was reluctant to do anything about this problem. It seems he was hanging back from doing what God wanted him to do. And that was the problem. So his mother took that problem into her own hands. And she said, they have no wine. Now, it's not in the Bible, but she probably also said, even if you're the son of God, listen to your mother. I can still tell you what to do. Show compassion and help this young couple. Set an example people will always remember. And don't forget, you're the son of God. You can do this. Well, Jesus said to Mary, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not come. And I think deliberately, the Bible says nothing about what was said right then. But his mother turned, said to the servants, you do whatever he tells you. Now back then, the social order went like this. Men, cattle, slaves, servants, and then woman, women. And a woman back then would never tell a man what to do. But Mary trusted Jesus. She acted out of her comfort zone, and she took a risk in publicly telling men what to do. And at the request of his mother, Jesus finally did what his mother told him. And it's important to realize the first public act of Jesus was based on compassion for two ordinary people. He and his mother wanted them to begin a new life with joy, not embarrassment. Now, standing there were six stone water jars that were used for the Jewish rites of purification. And we know Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. They filled them to the brim. Witnesses confirmed the miracles. But it's, an, it's interesting to think of what Jesus did. You can do the math. Each of these large jars held 30 gallons of water. Six jars, 30 gallons. Jesus made 180 gallons of wine. That reminds us of the magnitude of the love of Jesus. And it recalls what Curtis read with the uh, 23rd Psalm. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil and my cup overflows. Certainly the cups overflowed at that wedding. Jesus did this, the first of his signs. And this showed his priorities. Now, I've seen Jesus do something similar to turning water into wine. But in this case, Jesus turned beer into furniture. Jesus turned beer into furniture. Let me explain. Jesus turned beer into furniture for a man in his family. His name was Jim. He had a very unexciting drab life. So to add spice to his life, he began to spend more and more of his money drinking beer with his buddies. And as a result, he spent less time and less money with his family. But you know what happened. 
The beard didn't bring him the life he longed for. And he had nothing to show for the money he spent on beer except unhappiness and a rundown house. One day, a friend took a risk. He invited Jim to church. Jim said, I just don't understand church. I never went with my parents, but I guess I'll go. What do I have to lose? Well, Jim continued to go to church. He volunteered there. He began to pray for help in changing his life. It took a while, but slowly, with God's help and Christian friends, he changed his life. The money he used to spend on beer, now he spent it on his family and his home. And he would tell people, this Jesus is amazing. I'll never forget what this Jesus did for me. And then he'd say, you've heard the story how Jesus turned water into wine. In my life, Jesus turned beer into furniture. Jesus helped me have a better life. Now Jesus' actions show us his true character. Our God cares. And our God, our God puts compassion into action, often with the help of other people. And Jesus turning water into wine tells us his number one priority, and that should be our number one priority. Help people have better lives. Now Jesus hadn't started his public ministry, so Mary probably challenged him. She might have also said, you have the ability People remember your actions more than your preaching. Show compassion. What are you waiting for? And I think Mary says the same thing to all of us as we begin a new year. She would say to us, you have the ability to help people have better lives. You here at Central Christian Church have the ability to help people overcome their problems. What are you waiting for? This scripture also shows us how we can help people by following Mary's example. She saw a problem, and because she trusted Jesus, she took the problem to him. And after taking the problem to Jesus, she took a risk, and she acted. Never forget, Jesus will help us when we take our problems to him, and Jesus will help us when we act on those problems. Remember my friend Jim, he told others, I'll never forget what Jesus did for me. Jesus changed my life. He turned beer into furniture, and he'll solve your problems too. May we never forget to tell people what Jesus did for us. That's a challenge for us in 2018, to tell that story. Well, in summary, a young couple getting married to help them. Jesus turned water into a wine, water into wine. For a family with a husband that drank too much, Jesus turned beer into furniture. What do you want Jesus to do for you and your family in 2018? And remember, if you want to be more like Jesus, listen to your mother. Amen.